Welcome back for another video. Hope you've been enjoying them. Hope that you find them somewhat useful. Today we're going to be getting into a new topic, a topic that we'll be covering over the course of two weeks at least, and that is the area of signal processing. A lot of folks like this particular topic because we start to get into some tools that are available not just in programs like Audition but also in outboard gear that help us manage and manipulate the sound. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to jump over to the PowerPoint here and then we will have the discussion. I want to start things off by giving you an, you know, an understanding of the four categories that we lump these processors into. And we'll look at one in particular called the spectrum processors. So by signal processors, we're talking about the tools that we can use to manipulate or change characteristics of a sound. When we put these in groups, uh, we're putting them in groups that relate to aspects of sound that we've already sort of talked about for the most part, right? If you think about manipulating sound, you kind of have to think about what are the qualities of sound that we're interested in? What are the components of sound? So if you think through that, it would be pretty clear to you that, well, we've got to have some processing that relates to amplitude. And you'd be correct. You have to think that, well, what's another component, component that we've talked about? And one would have to be frequency. And absolutely, frequency is an area where we're going to be doing some processing. Two other areas that may not be so obvious to you are time and then noise. And so we will address every one of those categories between now and next week. So here are the categories. It's spectrum, which relates to the frequencies, the frequency spectrum, amplitude, time, and noise. And if we put it in this order of spectrum, time, amplitude, noise, it spells out Stan, and uh, there are quite a few students who have used that as a little device to remember the four categories. Stan, spectrum, time, amplitude, noise. Great. So maybe that'll work for you. I don't know. So if we think about spectrum processors, that's what we're going to focus on for this particular video. There are two basic kinds of spectrum processors, and we've actually had some experience with them up to this point. Uh, they are filters which allow us to cut away signal. And our example that we've been exposed to is the base roll-off or high-pass filter. There's also equalizers. Equalizers allow us to boost or cut at different points along the frequency spectrum. And we've been exposed to that to some degree through our experience with production consoles. So this stuff is kind of new in terms of its detail, but familiar because we've seen some of these already. Now let's start things off by talking about filters. Which ones are you used to already or that you're familiar with? As I mentioned, well, the base roll-off is familiar, a high-pass filter. But there are a couple of different kinds of filters that operate similarly to that idea of the base roll-off or high-pass filter. So this first image that I put down, the one where there's a cutoff point and the shaded area is to the left of the cutoff point. That is showing us where we have a point at which we're going to roll off the frequencies. In other words, the grayed area or the blackened area is the area where sound is passing through. And in this case, we have a cutoff point we're picking out. And then above that, we're rolling it off to the point where we're letting less of that high frequency signal come through. And so we call it low pass. To the right, we have the opposite, right? The one that we're used to seeing in our base roll-off or high pass filter buttons. We have a cutoff point and we're letting the signal above that frequency pass through unabated, right? It's not being changed, but the sound below it is getting rolled off and reduced, and diminished. So in detail, low pass filter, the frequencies below the cutoff are being allowed to pass through. The frequencies above are being reduced. High pass filter, just the opposite. Frequencies above pass through. Frequencies below get rolled off. So those are two that are part of this family of four filters that are like this. Here's the next one. This one is showing us the grade areas in the middle 
the spots above and below are taken away. So when we think about this one, we've got a cutoff point and we are trimming around that cutoff point so that we only have the signal coming through that is a little bit above or a little bit below that cutoff point. So we call it a band pass because we're letting a band of frequencies go by and cutting above and cutting below. So that is the band pass. Naturally, if we have a band pass, we have to have the inverse, and that's what we have here. Here we're cutting away and not allowing signal coming through around that cutoff frequency, but we are letting the signal above and below go by. So this one's called a notch filter. We're cutting away, making a notch in the frequency spectrum. These are not going to be as commonly used. There are some ways in which we might use them. The bandpass could be useful for trying to, say, create um, the effect of a phone sound. If somebody's trying to create a sound of somebody talking on the phone, well, we know that the phone doesn't transmit high frequencies and low frequencies really well. It's really mostly focused on mid-range. So you could use a bandpass filter and try to cut away some of the highs and lows and then just emphasize the mid-range and get your phone quality sound but it's not really something that's used too frequently. The notch filter has some value in trying to perhaps eliminate a very narrow noise that might be in our recording. So we could just notch away some sound that's at a certain frequency. If it's very focused, we can try to remove that without affecting the other frequencies above and below. Uh, in addition, this is possibly used in a live setting in order to identify frequencies that might feed back in a public address system and then notch those out of the performance so that you don't have as much feedback but you're not affecting the full range of frequencies. You're just zeroing in on a couple that are problematic for feedback. So those are just a couple of ways in which we might use these filters. But as I said, they're not as frequently used as the other two. So they are really a collection of four that are cutting away. Now these next filters are sort of the ones that break the rule. They're not just cutting away, they're boosting or cutting. And these are called shelving filters. We have a high shelf, so that's the red one here. The red indicates that we can find a cutoff point and we can boost at that point or we can reduce the sound at that point. So we have that option. The same thing on the right is a low shelf where the blue showing us that we can boost those low frequencies at a cutoff point or reduce them. Now when we reduce the frequencies say on the low end what we're doing is creating essentially a high pass filter. When we reduce the high frequencies we're creating a low pass filter but this is a little more flexible because we can boost on those points above the cutoff frequency and not affect the rest of the frequency spectrum. So you will see shelving filters in Audition and in a variety of other um, processing gear. Here's a more narrow view, uh, just another um, demonstration or image of it, giving you an indication of how we have a boost or cut plus 6 minus 6 dB. And it's just a little extra graphic view of the boosting and cutting for these shelving types of filters. Now we've hit filters, and it's time to move on to equalizers. Question is, of course, what do they do? What do they allow us to do? Well, they allow us to control the tone of a signal, but you might say, well, filters could control the tone too because we're adjusting frequency, and that's true. But equalizers give us more control over the tone, and the reason is because we are going to be controlling a variety of frequencies at the same time and we're going to boost or cut them at these different points. So there are two main kinds. One's a graphic and one is parametric. The big difference is related to your ability to select the frequency at which you want to boost or cut. The graphic is a fixed frequency filter. Um, it's fixed frequency equalizer. And so that means that the frequency is already determined by the equipment. Whereas the parametric allows you to pick the frequency and have greater control over the width of the adjustment. We'll get into that in a moment. 
So here's a good old image of graphic, and sometimes we see this kind of thing reproduced to some extent in our computer programs because a lot of times they like to use those classic images, classic ideas. It's called the graphic from this time period because when you look at it, there's sort of a graphic display of how that frequency uh, spectrum is being represented. You could see the flow of high and low frequencies, some boosted, some cut, and so that's one of the reasons why they called it a graphic. Um, if you look at the frequencies in this particular image, you might notice that there's a relationship between them. It's pretty much a two-to-one relationship. Starts at 31, then the next one is 63, next one's 125, 250. You can see that we're increasing every time when we have a band to control. It's one octave above the previous. And so we can see that if there's a 10-band graphic equalizer, there are going to be 10 frequencies that you can control. Each one is going to be an octave above or below the previous one. And here we can see we can boost or cut at any of these 10 points. So that gives us quite a bit of control, certainly as compared to filters where we're just cutting away at certain points. So graphic is useful, and you'll see that in some of our programs, and you'll we'll play with it in Audition as well. Here's another image of a graphic equalizer that's being used in a different way. This is a, an image of a foot pedal for a guitar or a bass guitar or maybe a keyboard, something that people are using within the line of their instrument and trying to contour the sound a little bit. Uh, this one is frequently often uh, frequently used as a guitar equalizer, so the limitation on the frequency range is related to the frequency range of that instrument, really. So here we've got control over 100, 200, going up to 6.4. Again, we've got the octave range associated with it. And the image here in the graph, you can see how they're boosting around 400, but they're reducing at 100 and 6.4. So they're taking some of the highs and lows off and giving a little extra boost around 400 hertz. And so this is just another example of a graphic equalizer and an application for it. I want to give you an idea of what the parametric equalizer is like as well. This is one image. It's not an uh, audition image, but of course these kinds of tools are in all the different audio editing programs. So here you can see a couple of the different options that are available and what makes it different. So we've got the full spectrum of 20 to 20K, and we can actually manipulate at any point. It's not just low frequency boost at 31 or 63. You could boost at 35. You can boost at 74. It doesn't matter, right? In this case, what they're showing us is a bit of a boost at 92 hertz. And what we're seeing is a decrease, a, a, cut, a, a low point at 315 hertz. So it's pulling down there by about 24 dB. And then you can see there's an increase again, about 11 dB at 2600 hertz. So we've got this contour, an interesting contour. I don't know what kind of sound it is they're manipulating here, but, but it's a nice visual display of it. The other thing that's important to keep in mind is we're not just boosting and cutting in these particular um, tools, the parametric, what we can also do is adjust that sort of apron of the signal around the cutoff point. We can make it sharper or narrower, or we can make it wider and affect things more gradually. So that is the bandwidth or the Q associated with the frequency that we're adjusting. So the parametric is really valuable for its flexibility. And if you look at this image, you can see that those uh, little icons across the top are giving us a couple of different options that we can just click on right away. Uh, all the way to the left, you can see that little kind of curve down on the left. And what that is basically showing us is a high pass filter. And then we have a shelving filter. Then we've got a couple of these equalizer points. And then we've got another shelf except the one on the right is a high shelf. And then far right, you see you've got a low pass filter. So we even have some presets that you can just click through and manipulate and then make some adjustments within the program. So it's a very flexible tool, very useful overall. So those were our 
introductory discussions of signal processors. We started with the four categories. Remember STAN, right? Spectrum, time, amplitude, noise. We'll get into the other categories in other videos. And we did focus on spectrum processors, particularly the filters and equalizers. And that will pretty much sum it up for us this time.